The reading today is from John chapter 10, beginning at verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when the, he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is hired man and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So today we are looking at uh, the Good Shepherd and um, I found some sheep and uh, as I arrived, this one came towards me to listen to my sermon. I think that's a good sign. Anyway, let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word, your written word, and we pray that it would be your living word today to each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, after something like the resurrection, everything changes. And uh, people started to ask the question, well, who is this man? Is he a man? Men, men, people, women, when they die, they don't rise again. So what is he? Who is he? And so they went back to what he said about himself and his teaching. And so two weeks after Easter for us, we do the same. We go back to what Jesus was saying about himself. And today we are looking at the Good Shepherd, one of the great seven I Ams in John's Gospel. But what's unusual about this I Am is that all the other I Ams are impersonal. I am the resurrection. I am the life. I am the light. This one is very personal. I am the Good Shepherd. And it gives us a wonderful insight into the heart of God, into the feelings of God, the feelings of Jesus for us. And I want to pick out three, um, three feelings, if you like, or three personal attributes of the Good Shepherd that really are very powerful. The first one is that uh, he says he knows you. Shepherds know their sheep. I uh, came across a story of, of a um, of a uh, uh, a preacher who had been a shepherd, and he he tells this story that um, he met up with a, an old shepherd friend of his, and uh, they were going on a journey in a in a train, and and the shepherd uh, that he was with had recently taken his sheep to market and they were pulling out of the station and the shepherd looked out to the field uh, that was beside the railway track and uh, he pointed to some lambs and he said, there, 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 there are four of my lambs there. Because shepherds know their sheep. So what does he know about us? So what, what is this knowledge? that the shepherd has of his sheep. Just as shepherds know sheep are, are vulnerable and in need of protection, Jesus knows our humanness, that we are, are, we are very mixed up. He knows us by name and as each of us as individuals. 
And therefore he knows our quirks. He knows the bits that we want him to see. But more significantly, he knows the bits that we don't want anybody to see. He knows the bits that we hide from others and sometimes from ourselves that we are fearful of, that we are ashamed of, that uh, we don't, we're not proud of. Our failures, our selfish motives, our insecurities, our fears. He sees beyond the image into our very being. And he says, I know you, I know you, I know you, I know you through and through. And of course, our fear is that when someone really knows us, warts and all, um, that they won't like what they see, that they'll keep their distance, that they won't like us, that they will condemn us, that they will reject us. And that's why the second point is really so powerful within this context that Jesus knows us. Because he says, I will die for you. That is quite, quite remarkable. We think, gosh, seriously, knowing what you know about me, knowing all this stuff that I'm ashamed of, my insecurities, my fears, my failures, my mistakes, what you, you, you think I'm worth dying for? Listen to these words from scripture again. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And he says it again, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And in this is a profound Easter message. That little word for in the Greek means in the place of. He is saying, I love my sheep so much but when the wolves come, I become like a lamb for them to kill instead of you. I become a sacrificial lamb. He's saying I would lose anything rather than see my sheep die. I'd rather lose my life. I would lose my glory. I would rather lose everything than see my sheep perish and stolen. Comparing us with sheep isn't very complimentary. They are defenceless, stupid, needy. And that's precisely the point, that despite our vulnerability, that despite our selfishness and independence, yet he prizes us so much that he would give up everything and die in our place. You know, there's no greater affirmation of our worth than this, that Jesus looks past our, our defences. He looks past them and sees you, me, us as infinitely precious and beautiful. And he thinks to himself, I would rather give up my life than see you die. When someone really knows you, accepts you, and actually with all that wants to stick with you through thick and thin, and will sacrifice all sorts of things for you, only then do you know that you are okay, that you are lovable, that you are likeable. And finally, he, uh, he says he calls you by name. It's actually in verse three. It's just before our reading today, but it's all part of the same image. Uh, it's very easy to think, oh, you know what? That would be my personal name. He calls me by my personal name for me, Peter. But what makes you, us think that, that, uh, that God would call us by the name our parents have given us? Maybe... Maybe he has his own name for you and for me. Because uh, he does give people names in the Bible again and again. He changes their names. So 
So we think of Abraham becoming Abraham. We think of Simon becoming Peter and numerous others. And I think that's probably something very rich for us to ponder on this Sunday. It speaks of our uniqueness, of our significance, of our individuality to Jesus. And I would suggest that it's probably quite fun to explore <coughs> what, uh, what name God or, or Jesus has uh, given you. But I want to draw out one, one aspect of him giving us a name. Because the names he gives to people in scripture are for a reason. It describes his calling on their life. And that means he has a purpose for you. He has a calling on your life. And to start with, it is a calling to be where you are. You are called to the neighbourhood you live in. You are called to your workplace. You are called to your school, your college, uh, to your family. And for the moment, at this moment in time, it is a calling to be where you are. But maybe he's calling you onto something different. And so just to bring this all together. And this is the question that we are left with. The Good Shepherd is calling you by name. He's calling you to follow him. In the Middle East, uh, uh, shepherds do shepherding differently than they do in, in the UK. In the UK, you'll see shepherds driving their sheep uh, with sheepdogs. And, but in the Middle East, uh, the shepherds call their sheep and their sheep follow them. You'll see them on the hills. The shepherds go ahead of the sheep and the sheep follow them. And Jesus, in this image, talks to us about following him, just as he called his disciples to follow him. So his sheep are called to follow him. So the, the question is here is, the good shepherd is calling you by name. Are you going to follow him? because he knows you, he knows you through and through. He would give anything for you and he's got a purpose, he's got a calling on your life. And if you've said yes before, then that's a good time today to affirm that, to confirm it. If you've never said yes before, then there's nothing like this day to say, yes, Jesus, I am going to follow you from now on. And of course, that's a great, decision. It's a great decision. Um, it's a great decision of trust. It does mean leaving things behind, but it also means going on to some green pasture and a purpose and behind a follower that knows life better than any of us. And if you've never said a, a prayer which says, I'm going to follow you, Jesus, that I'm going to lead you in a prayer now. If you have said this prayer before, then I invite you to just to confirm it again in your own heart. Let's pray. Father God, we, uh, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who, who is our good shepherd. Thank you for his goodness, his heart for us, that he knows us through and through, that he calls us by name, that he, he gives up his life. He, he's given up everything for us. And what a, what a wonderful person to therefore entrust our lives to. And so we choose now, we decide now, either for the first time or for the nth time, to leave everything else behind and to follow Jesus. And we ask that you would help us by your spirit. We ask that you would forgive us all the things we have done wrong, those things that we are ashamed of that you know about, we turn away from those and we embrace the life that you are giving us. In Jesus' name, amen.